Hey guys and welcome back. Today will be October 2018 budget review. There are obviously a lot of things that have been going on and I have been really busy so I haven't had a chance to actually film this as soon as I wanted to. We are already, um, what day is it, the 3rd of November I would say. So at least I'm still doing it. So I just wanted to share with you guys my numbers of everything that I spent in October. So I like to do this so that you guys can kind of see how I spend my money, whether I went over or under, and pretty much just give you guys a reason why, um, which as you guys know, I like to explain that to you guys a lot. Um, I think it really helps because usually these budget reviews for me determine the following month to see if I need to increase certain categories or not, or um, if I need to create some new ones. So we're going to start off with our expenses, which are basically our cash envelopes. So our sinking funds are here, and usually the sinking funds don't change. Whatever amount that I stated in the beginning is what I deposit. So that usually remains the same. So I don't find a need to actually go through and tell you guys. As I said, nothing changes for that. So this is the one that is always changing. So bills change, but not as much as your actual expenses do. So I'll zoom you guys in a little bit more. Okay, so for groceries and house, I give myself $600 for the whole month. And this time we came in at $855.48. So as you can see, that is a $255.48 difference. So what happened here is on week two, I believe, was when me and my husband decided to go on the keto diet. And we went really crazy and bought a bunch of stuff at Costco, or sorry, Sam's Club. And that's pretty much where that $500 hundred dollar amount came from on week two we spent five hundred dollars so there was a lot of things that we couldn't have that were in our pantry basically and so we obviously needed to go and buy a bunch of things that were keto friendly and again we went overboard and just kind of bought for like the whole month in a sense so that pretty much put us over there for fun and eating out we have $200. $200 is split up into a weekly amount. So for October, we had four weeks. So technically each week, I was giving ourselves $50 for fun and eating out. We came in at $329.78, which put us over at a negative $129.78. So this is definitely always our second category, which is always the second one that I track. Second category that we always go over, we do have a problem with eating out. Um, it definitely has decreased from before I started budgeting, if you guys would have known between our groceries and eating out monthly, we would spend about 2,500 and there was so much food wastage. So this amount is definitely at least 50% less than what I used to spend. So for family outings, we go out once a month. This is a monthly budget and that's for us to go out to eat with um, my family, not like ourselves. Um, so I put $150. We didn't go anywhere this month and we haven't been going for the past two months, but we have been putting this amount just in case something changes and our family decides to get together. So we came in at a positive $150 there. So that's a perfect thing right there for personal spending. I put $50 for the whole month and I basically break it up into two times. So like every two weeks I'll give myself $25. So I ended up only spending $50, like the actual full amount, which is a huge, huge progress for me. And in the beginning of the month on a, another month, I believe it was September, 
or August when I started giving myself my personal spending, which I didn't have before. Um, I noticed that if I gave myself the full $50, I still ended up going over more than $50. And this time, splitting it up into two really allowed me to just not overspend. And I think the main reason why is because I have already purchased all my planner supplies for 2019. So when it comes to personal spending, I don't necessarily buy things like you think I would. Most of those things would be covered under a sinking fund. So like if I wanted some clothes, you know, we have a clothing fund or most of the clothes I've been buying has been for our travel, which comes out of our travel sinking fund. So most of the things, like I said, if I want, they come out of a sinking fund. So I don't really have much of personal spending, except for times that I may go to the swap meet or something, and I want a snack or something randomly, you know, then that's what I have the personal spending for. So now that I've kind of gotten everything that I needed, I'm staying pretty much within my limit. And also, again, just splitting it up into two has really helped me instead of giving myself the full $50 at the beginning of the month. So for gas, this is another category that we're definitely always okay with. We don't really ever go over. I give ourselves $120. This is kind of in... Um, separated into two times that we put gas about sixty dollars each so this time we came in pretty low at 95.88 so we have an overage of 24 dollars and 12 cents so that's a great thing as well so for my parents rent they are fifty dollars that doesn't change that always maintains 50 so we stayed at 50. for my parents groceries it's fifty dollars twice a month is $25 each trip and so we came in at 3602 which gave us a positive of $13.98. I like to spend the full amount but for some reason I actually took them grocery shopping on both occasions and they really didn't want much and so I think I'm not going to take them grocery shopping anymore because they feel um uncomfortable or bad for spending money but the point is they already know that I separate this money for them but they're still very nice enough to feel uncomfortable and not want to spend my money so I'm not going to take them anymore honestly I thought it was going to be a good thing because I like to take them out in general um, and just I thought maybe if I include them I don't know they may get stuff they like um but like i said it didn't work out so they didn't really spend the full amount so next time i'm just gonna go without them and then just spend the full amount because that way i could ensure that they're not feeling bad for spending my money so anyways we came in at a positive 13 dollars 98 so for their allowance that always stays the same i give them 50 dollars, 25 dollars each so that came out to 50 now parents outings was a new category that i started this month because i was noticing that i go out to eat with my parents or take them out on an event and i didn't want to include it into our um budget from the fun and eating out because it's a separate category as you see i have my parents riddled here because i like to see what i spend on my parents and what i spend on ourselves so it's separate you know if i included it in here then it would always seem like i'm overspending so that's why i have it separated um so i was noticing that i wasn't really having much money on the eating out portion to take them out um, I did have it, but what I'm saying is I didn't budget for it, so I was always going over on the amounts. And so I decided to do probably like twice a month that we go out to eat together, that we take them out or do something fun. And it was supposed to be $50 for the full month. So we actually came in at $76.16. I mentioned this on week three um, that... I was going to be taking them out and it didn't really matter that I didn't have enough money because um, my mom was going through some difficult things with my grandma. She lives in Mexico and she was really, really sick. So my mom was really depressed, um, obviously. So we ended up, um, well, I mean, I ended up taking her out just to get distracted 
so that's what put me over budget because I wanted to distract her and just you know spend time with her so obviously that cost a little bit more money so that's the reason why we went over so we were minus twenty six dollars and sixteen cents okay so for beauty now this is one of those hard categories for me I just implemented the beauty category where I added my nails and eyebrows for me and my husband my son has always had his hair cut but he doesn't seem to need it as often maybe once every two months so that's another category I will be reevaluating. now it sounds weird but I don't waste the money that I need to and I need to waste this money so on some categories you're trying to hopefully be under of what you budgeted for but for beauty I'm really trying to implement that for ourselves and try to take care of ourselves you know just make myself feel good with doing my nails and eyebrows and so that's why I decided to put this category but I really need to actually find a place where I can make an appointment most of the nail places are just kind of like oh just you don't need to make an appointment just walk in and that really doesn't help because just walking in I never um, make the time to walk in but I know that if I have an appointment then I'll go so I need to do that just kind of find a place that takes appointments the one that I go to doesn't so I want to make sure that I do that so that I will stay on track and use the money that I actually spent because you know when it's the weekend when I actually have time to do it I get lazy and just don't want to go out and so like I said if I have an appointment time then I know for sure I'll go so obviously we have the full $75 my son didn't need a haircut this month so now in November we're going to thailand so for sure we definitely will be using our full budget he'll be getting a haircut we'll be getting our eyebrows done and i'll be getting my nails and um, my manicure and pedicure so we are positive 75 dollars on that my son's allowance we went out a couple times he didn't care to get anything um and i think that's mainly because he has everything he's more of a video game kid now and he has all the games he needs so it doesn't I don't know if this is something that I'll be keeping or not I took it out then I put it back on um, so this is another category to just see if you know rethink of so $20 we didn't spend anything so I have $20 still so positive $20 holiday decorations I put $200 and this was decorations for Halloween and fall and I didn't end up spending as much as I thought I sh I was going to and I kind of got cheap and just bought mainly things for Halloween and a little bit of things for fall not so much but I didn't end up going to home goods like I wanted to um, just because again I got kind of cheap so we came in at $52.95 so we have an overage of $147.05. So next we have holiday activities. And that was pretty much the only holiday activity we had this month was for Halloween. So this included anything related to Halloween, which is basically only the Halloween party that we had for me and my son and my husband. So any food that we were going to be purchasing for the party. I did $50. We came in at $60.14. So we were minus $10.14. So not too bad on that. So possibly another category to think about. I may have to increase this depending on the holiday and just kind of analyzing what is our normal type of foods that we like to eat. We usually like the same pizza place. We know how much it costs. It's less than $20, like $19.14 to be exact is how much it costs us to get pizza there so you know possibly next time I'll just kind of to the T try to figure out how much I'm going to be spending and then budget that amount so Universal Studios we had that plan prior to us going on a diet so my husband loves Harry Potter, wants to try the butterbeer. So since we were on the keto diet, that was obviously a no-no in our book. And we didn't want to break the diet. So 
we didn't end up going to Universal Studios, so obviously we saved $500 here, which is huge. I didn't mind spending this because we've never been to Universal Studios, and um, it's just something we just randomly decided last minute we wanted to do. Um, and so that's fine. We now have those $500 we didn't spend. So for my sister's flowers, it was her birthday. So I bought her flowers and so we came in at $46.63. So we came in at a positive $3.37. So for her decorations, we budgeted for October, yeah, for Halloween and for fall. It was gonna be $75. We only spent $32.30. So we are a positive $42.70. For car expenses, this included a 15,000 mileage um, service and a car wash. Um, I was estimating about $320 was the service and $30 for my car wash. It really needs a good cleaning interior wise. I haven't done it since a really long time. So I need a professional to, you know, clean in there. So it wasn't gonna be a detail because again, it's only like a $20 car wash, but they definitely are able to clean it a lot better than I can. So that's what the $350 was for. I ended up getting a discount at the dealer. They had like, I believe a 10 or 20%, yeah, 10% discount. And then I had a coupon for 20%. So everything came in at $270. I didn't get a car wash because again, I didn't have time. We came in at a positive $80. In store and budgeted, we had nothing, which is great. Online and budgeted was only $10.99. So we were negative $10.99. And this was pretty much an online course that my husband wanted um, to purchase. So we did really well in these categories. So here is the full budget, which has all the bills, the cash envelopes, and the sinking funds, and the total. So for rent, $3,000, that didn't change. For electric, I budgeted $100. We only came in at $65.90. So we were a positive $34.10. For gas, I put $30. We only spent $11.96, which apparently we've been having credits for something, so that's why it's been a lot lower. So we came in at a positive $18.04, which is great. All the other bills, internet, cell phone, car payment, car insurance, debt, loan, Netflix, Hulu, Instant Ink, and my cat's monthly food subscription, stayed the same so these are the only two difference differences on my bills and these were both positive so i didn't go over at all on my bills so next is my cash envelopes which are my expenses so we budgeted two thousand six hundred and ten dollars for the month we only came in at two thousand and sixteen dollars and thirty three cents so we were a positive $593.67. So 500 of those dollars was obviously coming from the Universal Studios that we didn't spend. And despite our overage on our groceries and our eating out, my parents' outings, and um, what more, the holiday activities, and online and budgeted we still had a lot of plus categories which are overage that was left over so that pretty much balanced out all of those negative categories and we still came in positive in a sense $93.67 because 500 of that was Universal Studios so total $593.67 for sinking funds, it was $1,530. Same amount, like I said, that did not change. 
So here is our phone number. We estimated $8,521 for the whole month. We only came in at $7,875.19. So we had $645.81 that we had overage on what we had budgeted for so that is a good number i love when i am a positive on my month despite like i said having negatives in other categories what's important is that you can balance out towards the end and the more you can stay in the positive on your categories then the more that this will increase it would have obviously been a lot higher had i not overspent in those two main big categories i could have had almost four hundred dollars extra if we watched out in these categories if you did like the video make sure to give it a thumbs up and if you have not yet subscribed make sure to hit that subscribe button and i will see you guys in my next video bye guys